Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Oh, so uh, again, so exciting to be with you all tonight. Um, my name is Nicholas Vaselli, and um, I am the artistic director of Theater Breaking Through Barriers. And yes, we are coming to you live as live can be here on Wednesday, hump day, uh, from deep inside the heart of the Thunderdome and sort of a sizzling, really impressively hot Midtown Manhattan. And on behalf of our wonderful uh, staff, team, and uh, group of artists, I would like to welcome you all to Theater Breaking Through Barriers, fifth virtual Playmakers Intensive, or BPI 5. Time capsule. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys. Um, you know, I, I, we have been having such a great time. Uh, this intensive has been, uh, you know, I, I know I say this every night, but I forgive me, but it just keeps getting better and better. Uh, the show is just one folds into the other. And by the end, it's like this beautiful 14 course meal uh, that you go to a fancy restaurant for. And yet you don't have to leave your houses. All you have to do is click on uh, YouTube and, or Facebook and join us. And uh, we're going to, by the end of this, you guys are just going to be so uh, you're going to be overflowing with such wonderful uh, new work that, that we're creating. Um, I think tonight, because Wednesday's a, Wednesday is hump day, right? So we have a really fun play for you tonight, you guys. I'm, I'm really, really proud of it. And uh, I, 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 saw, I saw the rehearsal earlier, so I think you're going to absolutely love it. Um, and there's also another special treat tonight. Normally, I would say, I'm not going to say any more, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to hand it over to our golden voiced audio describer who will walk you into the show. Well, guess what, folks? I am your audio describer this evening. I'm the golden voiced uh, person who's going to describe the play. So um, without further ado, I am going to hand you over to me. Um, I will be providing the uh, necessary audio description for tonight's play. Firstly, I'd like to remind you all that during our virtual Playmakers Intensive, our stage is your computer screen. That said, the stage is currently dark. When the play begins, each character will appear in their own separate box on your screen. Tonight's play is D.O.G., written by Juan Carlos Diaz and directed by Kalila Black. And it features Helen Cox as Helen, or H. Helen is a light-skinned woman in her 40s with long blonde hair pulled back in a messy bun, and she's dressed in a navy blue short sleeve shirt. During the course of the play, when she is on stakeout, she also wears a Yankees baseball hat and dark sunglasses. In the opening scene, she's in her living room. Behind her, we see the mural Mutt Hawks, a ripoff of Edward Hopper's famous Nighthawks painting with dogs sitting at the counter of a corner coffee shop. Dan Teachout as Casper, or C. Dan is a fair-skinned man in his 40s with gray hair, piercing eyes, and a gray goatee. He's dressed in a blue short sleeve t-shirt. In the opening scene, Dan is in his apartment, surrounded by large photos of dogs. Martin Lewis as Jerry, or JR. Martin is a man in his 20s with coffee-colored skin, Afro-textured hair, warm eyes, a friendly smile, and a slight goatee. He is dressed in a salmon-colored t-shirt and stands in front of a white brick wall. And Zen Theo as the chairman. Zen is an older gentleman wearing a fedora whose face and features are seen throughout only in silhouette. For the rest of the play, any additional description and scene changes will be voiced by D.O.G., the unseen pooch for whom this play is written, for whom this play is titled. Ladies and gentlemen, D.O.G. Day opens on H, then C. Ay, ay, ay. Fucking bullshit. Ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Hello? Hello. Hello? Thank goodness you picked up. 
Please, I fucking want to throw this damn phone today. I, I can't even begin to tell you. I can't even begin to tell you. Sucks. Freaking sucks. Wait, what? Oh. Please. Well, I... <laughs> this is no today. No, seriously, you go. Oh, all right. Well, you know how long I've been on the list for Puff's Paws Paradise. And after two whole years and plenty of recommendations, I'm finally a member. Well, today, today, I'm there with Scrubs and Butters, uh, who are both wearing their fuzzy muzzy muzzles, might I add. And what do I see? A dog. A dog without a leash and no fuzzy muzzy muzzle. Yesterday, I was at Pup's Paws Paradise with, with Mr. Cleans, and lo and behold, a crazy little spawn of Satan was just running around completely loose and carefree. No. Yes. Do you think it's the same dog and owner? Two jerks in our dog park with that carefree hippy dippy mentality and letting their dogs roam free without protection huh. or a leash you know I, i've worked too hard to gain membership and follow all the rules to have our sanctity of the pup paradise pissed on let's do something yeah tomorrow is friday one of us should go to pups paws paradise and stake it out if we see our guy we'll confront him casually Find out what his M.O. is and see if he's after our Pup's Paws Paradise Exemplary Owner of the Year. Yeah, uh, agreed. I'll go. The chairman. He's the best. <laughs> so, Jerry, remember to follow all the rules I've laid down. Above all... Be an exemplary pup person. Cool, cool. No problem, Mr. Byrne. Uh, please, uh, call me Vincent, my boy. <laughs> okay, no problem, Vincent. Who's a good boy who's filled with love, loved by me? The next day, staked out at the Pup's Paws Paradise. Hello. Hello? There he is, the dog I saw. Huh? Is he with the owner? Yes, and it's the same guy and dog we both saw. Are you going to approach him? Absolutely. Why don't... I want to just grill him and see what he's all about. And if he's trying to muscle in on my crown of the year, you know, our potential crown of the year, maybe the best person wins. Oh, uh, wait. Why don't we handle everything through our pup chairman's office? This way we can be more clandestine and finding out more on him from the comfort of our homes. Oh, good thinking. I'll reach out and see what I can dig up. Unexpected call. Unexpected call. Unexpected call. Ho, ho, ho. Hello? Hello. Hi, Jerry. <laughs> nice day, eh? Uh, yeah, yeah. Lovely, wouldn't you say? I would, but I've, I've been inside all day with my pup pal. And also, I don't know who you are. Oh, right, right. I'm Helen. Uh, I, too, am a member of Pups Paws Paradise. Long-time running member, actually. And um, I obtained your number, Jerry, through our exemplary office receptionist. Though <laughs> it took me a heck of finagling and niceness. As a revered member myself, one who is nearly about to be crowned Pups Paws Paradise exemplary proud dog owner of the year, I like to make rounds and be sure that our club and its uh, elite members uh, are always in exemplary form. Cool. And your member, yes? Uh, yeah. Well, as you may have guessed by now, everyone likes me here. I've put in a lot of time and I've followed all the rules. 
And that's never a bad thing when you're the next potential winner of this year's Pups Exemplary Master. <laughs> cool, cool, yeah. I, you know, I really prefer the word friend rather than master. After all, they are our, our furry friends, right? Well, uh, I, I gotta get going um, and, and no need to call again. Helen, right? Yeah. <sighs> oh, this is warm, mister. Later that day, she calls H to get the details. Hello? 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 What did you get? Oh, 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 he is totally gunning for my win and the sanctity of this dog park. Sorry, our potential win. Now to call our grand chairman's office and be the exemplary pup pals we are. Crown, here I come. <clears throat> you do it. His reverence makes me uncomfortable. Fine, I'll do it, chicken shit. Well, just wait till I win, honey. The following day, H calls the Pups Paws Paradise officers. Yes, yes, I know he's a very busy man, but um, if I could just speak with him about some business at hand, Sure, I'll hold. Thank you. Good morning, Helen. Hello, Vincent. <clears throat> uh, uh, I, I mean, Mr. Vern. <laughs> so? Has, sir, has anyone approached you? I mean, has anyone reported any odd activity or persons at the dog run? My dear. Are you insinuating that I'm not aware of my own enterprise or that I'm not doing a good job of being informed? Uh, oh, 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 no, 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 sir. I, I, uh, I've always seen you as the beacon of light and example, sir. I'm so very sorry. And let me assure you that I too follow your footsteps, always acting like nothing but an exemplary pup owner, sir. I'm sorry, sir. You know what? This is just a whole big misunderstanding. And I wouldn't want to do anything to jeopardize my eligibility for the exemplary pup owner of the year. Do you know what? I'm so sorry. I bothered you, sir. Goodbye. Receptionist, uh, get member Jerry on the line, please. Thank you. We open an H and C. What am I to do? And he totally thought I was challenging him or, or questioning his authority. <laughs> I may have completely blown my chances at exemplary pup person. Oh, oh no. Hang on a second. I got to put you on hold. Okay. Oh, <laughs> <clears throat> oh no, my dear. Uh, don't think that. You have just as much an opportunity as any other winner, sorry, <clears throat> potential winner. Besides, I'm sure Mr. Chairman didn't take it that way. He's much too wise a man. Why don't you call him? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I'd rather leave well enough alone. But, but, you know, if we both approach him, then he could see that it's more than just one of his members that is concerned. I'd really rather leave it alone. You know, besides, how often can we run into Mr. Free Spirit and his free balling, no muzzle pup pal? You know what? I think the chairman likes to go for his usual Sunday Zen. One of us should go and talk to him and in a very cordial way, of course. Yeah, 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 I'll go, I'll go. I need to redeem myself. The chairman under his Sunday Zen tree, H spies on him. Clandestinely. <laughs> oh my goodness, I was right! That hippie and his free testicle, low testicle, free hanging dog are gonna bring this whole club down. That damn hippie Jerry is sitting next to our chairman. Uh, no, wait. This can't be a lost cause. Why, why don't you approach them and see about sorting this out? After all, you have put time in, and our chairman is bound to see it our way uh they're walking away together 
Oh. Way to get out. Well, well, that's it, folks. The times they are changing. There walks off the stability of how things used to be, and with none other than hippie free spirited dog owner Jerry. Later that day, on the phone with the chairman and JR. So you see, my dear boy, now more than ever is this club in need of persons with decent hearts and modest brains. I expect you to honor all the rules of your membership. And within some time, uh, I will have uh, groomed you to take over. <laughs> this club needs uh, a new and fresh way of thinking and of operating. <laughs> One that is for the pups and by its true pup-loving people, or peeps, as you, you might say. I don't understand your generation. <laughs> that, that's beside the point. <laughs> I expect you to lead by example always and with non-judgment. So, are you prepared to lead us into the next evolution of Pups Paul's Paradise, also known as PP Paradise? With pleasure. Some time has passed. H and C are on Zoom in their respected homes. Oh. I'm so nervous. I don't want to look. You know, today's the day, and I thought I'd be more excited. Okay. <clears throat> Let's just rip open the email and, and uh, see who this year's winner is. Okay. Wait. Wait. Is that, is that my name and photo? <gasps> I freaking won. I freaking won. I'm the Wolfmaster, baby. Yay, how about that? Yeah, yay. So proud and happy for you. Oh, my God. Oh, 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 it's the chairman calling me. He must be calling to congratulate me. I'll merge all of us so we can, you know, you can hear the praise. Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Helen Casper. Hello, Mr. Chairman. Hello, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me to Actually, uh, you can both be first to hear the news. I am deciding to uh, step down after many, many moons and have brought in someone younger and fresher to help guide the fundamentals of this pop park and let it blossom according to the times, all the while respecting everyone's individuality and each other's uniqueness. I, I want us to usher in a, a new dawn of all happy things inclusive. With this, I welcome and officially introduce you both to our next Chairman of the board. So, from one ancient chairman to the next, welcome aboard, my boy. Today's show is brought to you by the letter B and the number one. Goodbye. <laughs> oh come on you guys that was fun wasn't it it was so much fun i love that piece i really did i thought it was i thought it was just so adorable and to get to see this whole crew uh put it all together oh amazing come on back Mr. Chairman, Zen, Theo. Oh my God, Martin Lewis, the amazing Martin Lewis. Dan Teachout, Helen Cox, Kalila Black. Oh my goodness. Um, I am so happy that you're all here tonight. 
Thank you so much. Um, our uh, playwright, uh, Juan Carlos uh, Diaz, um, yeah, uh, disappointing, he could, he could not be here tonight. Um, so I'm sorry that he couldn't be here because I really would have loved to have talked to him and, and it really picked his, his brain about what got him to write this and talk about this. He did leave a message um, uh, that he wanted me to share with you. So I'm gonna start with that and then we're gonna talk a little bit about this whole process. So here is what um, Juan Carlos wrote to me. I love artists and, and all manner of creative folks. I wanted to learn to lean into the frustration and topsy-turvy tur turmoil that the wonderful cast expressed from living this time in our lives, but I didn't want to relive a COVID play. Somehow dogs became a much more pleasant way to tell a story and perhaps show the absurdness of humans and not coming together as one. I wanted the journey to feel safe and silly, safer than our current world at least. In, sure, in short, I wanted to create something that would be a release for us all. As the voice at closing says, today's episode is brought to you by the letter B and the number one. B1, y'all. Well, mission accomplished. I think he, he nailed it in terms of that. I think this, this play had, um, again, aside from the... Um, uh, what might be perceived as what uh, lightness, silliness, frivolity. There was there was certainly a lot of um, message in the play, uh, and we'll talk about all of that. I want to start with you, Kalila. Uh, I'm so again. I I'm always so amazed uh, throughout this whole process because I know all of I know all of you are wonderful. Like you're so multi-talented as as uh, writers, as directors, as actors, um, as musicians. Uh, like there's just so much so much skill and talent in in this this group. And um, but I'm curious now that you, that I get to see you, you as a director, and you're such you're so wonderful. Um, what was this process like? Um, what was it like when you like guys you got, first got in the room and started talking about? What were you talking about? Like, how did this play come to be? Well, uh, I know that Juan Carlos reached out to all of us individually and learned different things about um, each cast member. And then he kind of already had the idea of it being um, in a dog park. And then we basically just um, accepted his work and then kind of like, uh, poured into it our own little, uh, you know, opinions and thoughts and feelings. And then it kind of morphed into this project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. I mean, cause I think what you did was you all played into, you really leaned into sort of the, I mean, they're, they're very, very short scenes, very, very, you know, tiny little bits and pieces, which feels very, in, in many ways, almost like a comic strip, you know? And, yeah. and you know, the, the characters, and I don't want to say our caricatures, I think in many ways they are. Um, I think certainly there's, uh, you know, the meaning behind this is not just, well, there's a lot of things to talk about. I mean, you know, first of all, New Yorkers and their, their, their pets, New Yorkers and their dogs, that there's, there's so much to be said about, about that. Um, and that's going to be an, another question. Well, we'll go, we'll go around the board and we'll ask, you know, are, are you more of a dog person or a cat person? I, that's, that's always a big one. I go off the board on that one. Then I'm more of a bird person, but that's a whole other thing. Uh, <laughs> um, but I think, uh, yeah, the, the, there's, we'll, we'll talk about, I think what's underneath all of this and what, what, what he was, uh, what I think Juan Carlos was trying to say. And I think you all very, you, you, you really sort of, played it really beautifully without really saying much, just, just the implications really did it um, for all of, for, for everybody. Um, wow. Uh, so yeah, I, I know that this is, this has to be uh, tricky for, for you. I mean, as a director and also as actors, um, when you're on this platform, you're not just called upon to stand and deliver your character you also have to be technicians and in a play like this with very short scenes there's a lot of on off switch backgrounds put on different clothes do all kinds of fun and crazy stuff um 
how challenging was that for you to, to put all that together? I think if I'll speak for the sound portion, um, it takes, it, it, it's taken repetition. Um, and the challenging part for me as a director was to make these characters so, um, they're, they, are, they care so much about <laughs> what they, their vision is and they take their, they're, they're, they're taking themselves really, really seriously. So I wanted to show people who may be taking themselves too seriously, which would allow us to really um, delve into what really matters and what's really, really important. And so I was like, rev it up, rev up the, the silliness, rev up the stakes. Um, mm -hmm. And then everybody was game. And, and um, Helen had the most changes and things back and forth um, and, and, and nailing it, everyone nailing it. <laughs> yeah, I, I am so, again, I'm so proud of everybody. I think you all did so incredibly well. It was such a treat to see uh, Helen and, and Dan op acting opposite each other. Um, just, for, you know, for, for you guys out there, Helen and uh, Dan, well, they're all, everybody's, we're all, you know, very, very dear friends of, of mine. Um, but Helen and, and Dan, when was the last time you guys actually performed together in, in anything? <laughs> you don't have to give a date, just a lot you could say, you know. I think that was it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not, I mean, we know, we've known each other a long time but I don't think we ever performed together. I don't, think you, guys, yeah, I don't think you guys ever performed together either. We, we had, uh, we were uh, many moons ago, we were interns at the, what was then called the New Jersey Shakespeare Festival. And that's where I met Helen and that's where I met Dan. And yeah, so it's been a while since we've all, I, I think it's hilarious that we're all together in the same room and we're all doing this work. Um, what were these characters like for you? I mean, again, I, 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 I love, what I love about what you guys did was the way you just embraced the work, all of you, you know, and all handled it really wonderfully in your, in, in your own wonderful ways and style. And, but I, I, I want to start with, I want to start with you, Helen, and, and we'll work down we'll work from you and then we'll talk to Dan and then I, I have to talk to Martin. So what was this like? Tell me what this, what this project was like, as opposed to, I think the last, what was the last one you, the last one we did together? Well, this one was uh, uh, different in that I had to, the challenges of Zoom, we all have talked about that till we're joking. Um, but I think particularly with this uh, piece, um, it's interesting because I had a moment before we started where I was like, oh no, my phone isn't charged. And I was sort of screaming at the top of my lungs alone in my apartment. And I was like, oh, that's exactly what it is. And it's exactly the way that even specifically I would see people treating their animals or not picking up after themselves or it's very not that far off. Um, and um, I used to walk a dog and there was definitely a mare of that dog park and that dog mm -hmm. run. So it, I think it really, it really resonated and, and um, what we've been through in the last year. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just fun. It was just fun to sort of, as um, Kalila said, you know, go over the top and chew the scenery up because they, that's what they're doing. They're, mm -hmm. they're those people. Yeah. W without question. Crazy over the top, no matter what. I, I, the fact that you're all competing to be like, you know, the, what is it? The, what are the owner of the year or pet, pet Pup master of the year. Pup master. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I just think that is hilarious. Um, it just it it just cracks me up. I thought it was funny, and and I love both. You know, you your sense of comedy is just amazing, as is Dan's. Uh, Dan, um, tell me what tell me how this was for you to see. <laughs> it just cracked me up. I, I mean, I personally I really like to play because it's it's really based. There's a real re realness. There's it's based in reality actually. Uh, mm -hmm. The dog park I'm next to has a sign that has 15 rules okay you know name it it's it's structured there and now there's a small dog part part of it and the dog has to weigh under 
22 pounds or something. It's like, okay, is, are some, are, are they going to weigh the dog before it goes <laughs> in? Who's, you know, who's policing that? There are people who actually will show up and say, you know, your dog is too heavy. It's mm -hmm. too big to be in the small dog part. And there'll be an argument that breaks out because they're like, well, my dog doesn't get along with other dogs. So I thought I could use it now. And they're like, well, that's not the rules. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. I mean, my God. So, so <laughs> and, and all my dogs I have here in New York City have always been my roommate's dogs, my friend's dogs. Um, and I love dogs. But uh, the, there is that. Uh, it's, oh, my gosh. So, um, yeah. <laughs> wow. But, uh, so I, I that being said, uh, it's just been a lot of fun. That's all. You know. It, it's a, it is, it is a real sort of, I guess, dog culture, dog subculture, dog, whatever you want to call it. It's really wild stuff. Um, I, uh, we'll talk about the, the, the dogs behind you shortly. Um, Martin, you know, I, I love, I love your, who you are. I love your energy. You've just, you were just so, you, you've just got this wonderful warmth and this, genuine sweetness you know uh tell me what this play means to you yeah no absolutely i love that appreciate that um very very happy to hear that um for me i think this play uh everyone kind of talked about it uh touched upon it but for me this play is about uh people and just like how absurd we can be but more specifically it's about expectations right mm -hmm. like we all are watching them run after this thing that they know that they're going to win. And I think this past year has taught me that you can have expectations, you can have plans, but, uh, you know, things, things happen, things, and you gotta, you gotta be able to roll with it. I also think it, it, it uh, the play stems around like us being comfortable where we are and being really resistant to change, which I've recognized in myself, especially after this, this past year. But I can't uh, express enough how much fun it's been playing with Dan and Helen, Kalila and Zen. I mean, you guys uh, bring me light. So this is this has been dope. I'm 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 really excited to hear what Zen has to uh, say about this play because he, <laughs> our relationship is so um, it's so uh, subtle. You know, it's not as clear as Dan's and um, and Helen's or, or C and Helen's. Right, but I, I like the imagination goes wild with me and, and, and Zen at least. So mm -hmm. I love it. I think it's great, and I and thank you for that wonderful lead in because I was saving Zen for last. Zen, Zen is Zen has um, well certainly in this group, but um, between tonight and tomorrow night, uh, we have two of um, sort of the founding members of TV TV. Zen has been with this company since it really first started, um, as with one of our um, uh, artists tomorrow night, George Eschiotis. Um, so he has sort of seen a whole, he sees the entire arc of what this company is, what this company was, and what this company can become. Um, but we'll talk about that later. I want to know more about what you thought of this, this experience, Zen, and what you thought of this play. Well, uh, first I want to ask Dan, what pup park do you go, have you been to? Oh, it's uh, Inwood Park. In, in, yeah, that's Inwood. where I go, to oh, Inwood really? Park. Yeah. We must have run into each other there. Probably. I, I may have made a comment about you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am definitely not the mayor of that pup park, but well, there, I, I'm there there's... from time to time. Matt, I have no idea what you look like. So if you see me, please say hello. Uh, okay. I have a, a German Shepherd. She is 75 pounds, six years old, and loves okay. to chase a ball. What's, what's her name? Scarlet. Okay. Okay. So if you're there at any time and you recognize us, please say hi. Okay, we will do. Uh, I want to thank, uh, first of all, my wife, uh, Christina. Uh -huh. with her. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, she's not in the room right now. She's watching one of her favorite programs elsewhere. Okay. But, uh, yeah, definitely thank her because I am technologically uh, lacking to a great extent. And, and uh, she is able to mute me and unmute me 
Uh, and uh, without that, there might have been a lot of noise interruption from the city's loud vehicle problems. Mm -hmm. uh, in, any, in any event, this project for me, uh, the way my character relates to it is, you know, it's the end of the line for the chairman. He knows he's got to go and he sees a new vision for the park, one that was not the vision that he had when he took over the park many, many years ago. So it's a matter of expressing a joy in being able to make a transition. Mm -hmm. uh, and for myself as, as an actor to appear without really appearing, since my, uh, my face is not visible, mm -hmm. I had to try to carry my character through my voice and some, some movement, not a lot, but some movement. And that was a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, since I'm a very physical person, uh, I can do a lot with my face. That was not happening. So I had to substitute uh, with my voice. And I tried a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And Kalila was so helpful mm -hmm. and supportive of all of that. And she pointed out to me at one point when I was not uh, uh, sufficiently articulate. Uh, and that was helpful. Uh, and then when I got to the point where I could be this ancient person and still be articulate, she pointed out to me that I had done that. Mm -hmm. So thanks to Kalila, uh, I worked on it every day, tried new things, different things. And after all, it is a play. So you mm -hmm. play with it. And eventually, we hope it becomes a work of art. And I want to thank all of the performers for really coming up in this performance, everybody was better than they had been at any time before. This was really very good. And I want to uh, compliment uh, Martin. I know you've had some uh, family difficulties lately. Uh, that kind of stress and pressure with illness mm. uh, might have caused a lesser person to drop out. So I thank you for your courage and your commitment. And that's about it, guys. And, and of course, wow. Nick. Well, Nick, you know, so I've been with TBTB since 1986. And I would not still be with TBTB were it not for you. Mm -hmm. You have done wonders with the company since you took it over. Uh, and I'm... I am blessed to have met you in my life, and it gives me an opportunity right now to thank you in no uncertain terms. I would, in all likelihood, not be with TBTB were it not for you. You have reached out to me over the years, and uh, I have been responsive to that because of your kind and loving nature and your commitment to the platform of, of providing opportunities for actors with disabilities. Thank you so much. Well, Zen, you're also a, a mentor. Um, and, you know, without becoming the Mutual Admiration Society, all I will say is, I, you know, listen, I, I, I recognize talent when I see it. And I, was, I did not want you to, if, if, if you were not able, or if you weren't doing this, that, that would be, truly be a loss for all. So I'm so grateful that you can, you could be sharing your talents here as well. Um, all of you, I mean, I'm just so grateful to all of you for, for the really the wonderful work. I think you played this um, piece pitch perfect um, because it is very fun, it's very light, and yet there is a meaning underneath it. There is most definitely a meaning in terms of, yes, we could talk about the absurdity of New York dog owners and the neuroticness of, you know, wanting to become the, you know, the, the, you know, pet owner of the year and all this other business. I'm curious to talk, to touch on that a little bit. And I don't want to talk too much longer because I want to give you guys a little bit of a break. You've been working very, very hard. And I, um, we have a show at 830. So I want to give you about 10 minutes to really relax and, you know, get a drink or use the restroom if you need to. But um, 
uh, how does this play comment or reflect uh, what we have been through over the last 16 months, whether that is um, isolation, uh, obsession with your pets whom you are getting to be with all the time because you're home all the time. Um, what about change? What about um, getting along with others? What, what about, um, what does this say about, what does this say about Black Lives Matter? What does this place say about that? Does this place say something about that in a very subtle way? Um, I'm curious if you guys have any thoughts about it. I um, definitely resonate with the hypersensitivity that this past mm -hmm. 16 months has caused with us all having to be still. That means that there is gonna be more focus on um, issues that may or may not be as important. Um, in terms of how it resonates with Black Lives Matter, I think what I, he what I first thought was people who want to make sure their voices are heard by any mm -hmm. means necessary. Mm -hmm. and um, the importance of the individual vision. That's what I, that's how the comparison that I can see. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I find it fascinating because my, my initial thought, and again, I, I find it really wonderful. The fact that the chairman is an older man, you never see his face. He's always in a silhouette. Um, and the one who is, he he decides to hand this over to is the the young African American gentleman. Yes. Um, and yes. the idea the idea of change being a necessary thing, and th that hopefully we are stepping into this change um, with you know at least that's a good that's a that's a good positive hope when you have. Um, you know the, the the forgive me the two the, the two older characters who are just so wrapped up in being number one and 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 Jerry is you know I, I think he has his desires too but he's just sort of he, Jr he's he's very happy he's very easygoing and I'm curious I just I don't I, maybe I'm maybe I'm misreading that but it's just sort of what I what I thought and what I felt in a good way I mean this is that's this is sort of a positive and yet very subtle way of but I don't know. Am I am I am I way off with this one? Anybody? No, no. I I mean that's um, when we got the pieces together and we finished the rehearsal process and we saw how everything played out. Um, that's the first thing that came to me. I'm like, why is the chairman giving me of all people? Why is he bequeathing this power onto me? And I think um, for me, it resonated with the time that we're in right now where we're seeing a uh, changing of the guards and the change of guards, the guards, they got more color these days. So it's mm -hmm. kind of, a, it's, that, that's what I got um, from playing. That's what I've been thinking about in relation to BLM and this play. Yeah, I, I, I found it fascinating. And I like the fact that, again, I just love the thought of the chairman just being a voice and a, and, a, and a silhouette. You don't, you can't really make out features. You don't, you don't see, you don't see, I mean, you get, you sort of get the impression, um, older, male, you got the British accent. So you, you sort of make your own conclusions, draw your own conclusions from that. But mm -hmm. there's also an, a, an element of wisdom of this idea of, you know, the, the changes that need to come are positive changes. Um, yeah, I think the chairman is tired of suppressing mm -hmm. for all this time and realizes that what he has created is a, a society, be it of dogs, mm -hmm. where everyone is wearing a muzzle uh, and uh, on a leash mm -hmm. uh, in a pup park where you're supposed to run free. Yeah. So yeah. he just tired of that and he brought in the next generation, the next evolution of 
society yeah, yeah. where that's no longer going to happen. I, I, I like that the words aren't there, that the words aren't written there. I, I like that it doesn't say that. Right. But it is that. That to me is gives yeah. it strength. Yeah. Yep. No, no. Not that's, over. That's it. So that's why this works, by the way, because it's got that little, su it's there, but yet it's, it is not, you know, uh, the little hints are dropped throughout. You know, little hints are dropped throughout, but it is really about it. It 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 really is in many ways very sort of crazy and cartoonish. The fact that she's going on a stakeout because she wants to find out who this guy is, you know. And oh, oh, oh this was the time. I mean, I think that I just think it becomes sort of fun, funny, and 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 you know, I, I don't want to say silly, but definitely there's a a, a cartoonish element to it. Um, and, and I have to say, all of you, you nailed it because you really played this the exact way I, I think it should be played. If you, if you were too heavy handed, if you decided to throw more reference to, you know, this is what we feel it means, we need to really hammer that, you, you're killing the, what this is supposed to be, you know? And I think you guys are really so great. So great. I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of you guys. I, I just think you're wonderful. Um, does anyone else have any thoughts about the, the work or, or what you're, you know? Oh yeah, just a quick, just a quick one around. We can talk about it in the next one. It's, I know it's sometimes hard to say, but predominantly, are you a dog person? Are you a cat person? Or do you have another pet of choice? So I will start with you, Zen, the chairman. I've had both. I've had many cats and I've had two dogs. They are different. Uh, I can't pick one over the other. Uh, I love them all. They're, they're beautiful animals in ways they are smarter than us, certainly more aware of their environment than we are. And more able, in particular cats, are more able to exist on their own. Yeah. Uh, and, and dogs, a dog is closer to a person than a cat is. And I love them all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, good. That's a good answer. It's just a, a good solid. And, I, and I'll agree with you. Uh, how about you, Martin? Uh, you know, I've grown up with cats. Um, uh, I had a dog for a little bit, too. I got to say, I love me some dogs. Um, but I, living in New York, I'm trying to figure out how do I have a, an animal companion within the you know small tight spaces we have out here. So I was thinking like maybe switch it up, try to get a Komodo dragon, a snake maybe. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> try something else, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. I, I you know, I, that's that was my my reason for uh, actually getting birds um, because. You know, uh, Amory and I, we, we love animals. I love both. I love cats and dogs. Can't have cats, though, because um, my mother and my sister are, like, very allergic to cats. So that was never an option, sadly. But we love dogs. But yet then there's a problem of to walk the dog several times a day. It, it becomes another responsibility. So the, the, the easy answer was, what about a bird? <laughs> Birds stay in their cage. You clean the cage. You feed them. You don't have to walk them. And so there you go. Um, I will say I am very happy that we are in our office and I am able to do this yes, without the sound of the birds in the background. It sounds like we're in a jungle or something. Um, I remember that. But, but yeah, that's great. I, Komodo dragon, hey, I'm all for it. I, I, don't know, I don't know if they'd allow that, but hey, I'd say if you can do it. <laughs> great. <laughs> um, all right, Dan, I think I know your answer, but tell me. Oh, you're, you're oh see, you're, you're muted. No, I, I like all animals. And uh, I just, uh, I ended up with two COVID kitties because uh, mm -hmm. they were homeless or whatever. But, um, and I didn't want to have cats, but uh, they, they're really, it's very nice. Yeah. yeah. They, they do, they do grow on you. And yeah, yeah, they're, it's, oh. they, the energy is just a, a great. And they're thing. good for long periods of time. Uh, I mean, a dog, the best the dog, the longest you could be away from a dog is 12 hours without, you know, assistance. Uh, 
Sure. And that's just, you know, so. Um, can do you, can you tell me the dogs behind you? Do you like, well, that's, this is cricket. Cricket lives in uh, Oakland. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is uh, Kalija. Kalija was in LA. She's now gone. And Roxy is in Austin. She moved to Austin and now she's gone too. So, and then wow. there's, there's this, you know, we replace animals. They, they, pets, uh, pets die, you know, <laughs> and uh, we live so long. So, you know, you just, yeah. you keep replacing them. And there it is. No, but it's a it's a hard thing to do sometimes. I mean, especially when people are so attached. My goodness. How about you, Nelly? Uh, you know, I I love animals. Uh, if I could have both, I would. But I lean a little bit more towards dogs, and I talk to dogs through my mask. <laughs> like you're cute, because you know, every time I see a dog, I I feel like I have a connection. Yeah. But I love cats too. I love them all. They're all great. I know you are. You're you're so great with with everything. I mean, you're just you're just great. All right. Last but not least, Kalila, come on. Dog. Attack. I grew up with cats and in New York, but when I moved to LA, LA is such a dog city that I had to get a, a dog. I had to get a puppy. Mm -hmm. So I can't tell him that I don't like cats. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would be upset, but technically, I think I. Prefer for cats he's just he just needs a lot a lot of attention yeah lot. lots of attention and shows you constant love i we got a chance to meet him the other night and oh my god just so damn cute constant. you can't even go to the bathroom I, it's so different it's so different you can't <laughs> <I know. laughs> we're oh, going to back here <laughs> <laughs> i need you i need you even if they're yep. asleep like stay asleep no i'm waking up and I'm, I'm doing whatever you're doing, so. Yeah, I know, it's adorable. It's adorable, oh my goodness. Well, thank you guys so much for sharing. All right, I'm gonna give you a break. So please turn off your cameras, get a break, have a drink. We'll, we're gonna start this all again um, in a few more minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanna thank you so much for being a part of our work tonight on Wednesday. Happy, happy hump day. Um, I hope you enjoyed the show. We had, uh, again, uh, so, so, so incredibly proud of our cast, our wonderful director, and uh, of course, our uh, wonderful playwright, Juan Carlos. Um, I'm sorry he could not be here tonight, but certainly his spirit was in the words that he created. Um, I hope that you will continue to tune in and watch. We have, we're gonna be starting another show in five minutes. So if you like this, oh, please help yourself to a second helping. 8.30 on Facebook. I promise you, you're, you will not regret it. Um, wow. Tomorrow, we have another great show. Uh, I, I know it sounds re repetitive, but uh, you know, I can't, how can I, how can I improve on that? Tomorrow night, we are going to be featuring, featuring a play by uh, one of, uh, I mean, he has, he has worked with uh, TV TV for so long and there's a reason for that we just absolutely love him in fact he um he had just relocated and he moved across the country he now lives in Colorado but we're still working with him and that person is Jared Bogard and he wrote a really great play called Parent Teacher um the play was directed by again first time work uh, working with us here at TV TV Tamar Kummel I can't wait to work with her again she's just amazing and we have this ridiculous cast led by the legendary George Asciotis, Stuart Green, Caissa Penny, and uh, Estrella Tamez. Estrella Tamez uh, is, happens to be the mother of Caissa. So I think that you are going to enjoy tomorrow night's show, Parent Teacher, 7.30 on YouTube, 8.30 on Facebook. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Please uh, friend us on Facebook, uh, become a, a, a subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to our website, tvtv.org. You can find out everything TVTV. TV. And if you really love us, you can click the donate button at the top of the page and you can partner with us. Um, and I promise you when you do that, that is a commitment we take very seriously. So we hope you'll do that. Have a wonderful evening and uh, we'll see you in a few more minutes on the other side, okay? Great night, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.